In this video, we're reviewing the NFHS baseball slide rules and everything you need to know about this rule to enforce it properly on the field. We'll also review the associated case plays from this week's quiz, and you can sign up to receive our weekly quizzes in the video description. Hey everyone, Patrick Farber from GHSA Baseball Umpire Development and Umpire Classroom, where we help umpires develop their knowledge and skills. If you are new, please help us with our goal of reaching a thousand subscribers. It's greatly appreciated. So let's get started. To start, the NFHS slide rule is very different from the rule used in professional and collegiate baseball. To properly enforce these rules in a high school game, we need to know and understand the rules as written and not just what we've seen on TV. In the NFHS baseball rules book, there's two sections that enable us to understand and enforce the slide rules. The first is rule two, section 32, which covers the definition of both legal and illegal slides. Article one covers the definition of a legal slide. It reads, a legal slide can be either feet first or head first. If a runner slides feet first, at least one leg and buttocks shall be on the ground. If a runner slides, he must slide within reach of the base with either a hand or a foot. A runner may slide or run in any direction away from the fielder to avoid making contact or altering the play of the fielder. So to recap this, there's really three takeaways we need to understand. First, a legal slide must be either feet first or head first. If feet first, it requires that one leg and one buttocks be on the ground. Second, a legal slide must be within reach of a hand or foot. And third, a runner may slide or run out of the way in order to avoid contact or altering the play. Next, we have Article 2 covering illegal slides. It reads, A slide is illegal if the runner uses a rolling, crossbody, or pop-up slide into the fielder. A slide is illegal if the runner's raised leg is higher than the fielder's knee when the fielder is in a standing position. A slide is illegal if, except at home plate, the runner goes beyond the base and then makes contact with or alters the play of the fielder. At home plate, it is permissible for the slider's momentum to carry him through the plate in a straight line. A slide is illegal if the runner slashes or kicks the fielder with either leg. A slide is illegal if the runner tries to injure the fielder. Or a slide is illegal if the runner on a force play does not slide on the ground and in a direct line between the two bases. So let's look at the big takeaways from an illegal slide. First, it's an illegal slide if it's a rolling, crossbody, or pop-up slide into the fielder. Second, it's an illegal slide if the runner's foot is higher than the fielder's knee when the fielder is standing. Next, except at home, it is an illegal slide if the runner's slide takes them beyond the base and then the runner makes contact with the fielder or alters their play. Next, it's an illegal slide if the runner slashes or kicks at the fielder. And this rolls into that it's an illegal slide if they attempt to injure the fielder. And finally, it's an illegal slide if on a force play, they do not slide in a direct line between the two bases. Now, to find the penalty for an illegal slide, we go to Rule 8, which covers base running, Section 4, Runner is Out, and see Article 2B. It reads, any runner is out when he does not legally slide and causes illegal contact and or illegally alters the actions of a fielder in the immediate act of making a play, or on a forced play does not slide in a direct line between the bases. A runner may slide in a direction away from the fielder to avoid making contact or altering the play of the fielder, and runners are never required to slide, but if a runner elects to slide, the slide must be legal. Jumping, hurtling, and leaping are all legal attempts to avoid a fielder as long as the fielder is lying on the ground. Diving over a fielder is illegal. So to clarify, again, on a non-forced play, the runner is out when he does not legally slide and makes illegal contact and or illegally alters the play. Now on a forced play, the same rule applies, but the runner can also be out if he does not slide in a direct line between the two bases. That said, there are a couple of clarifications. First, the runner is allowed to slide away from the play, and second, the runner is never required to slide, but must at least avoid contact and altering the play. Then finally, jumping, hurtling, or leaping over a player that is on the ground is legal, but diving over a player is always illegal. Now, to enforce this rule, we need to look at the penalty associated with Rule 8-4-2B. 
It notes that a runner will always be out when they make the illegal slide, and it is enforced like any interference play and the ball is immediately dead. It also adds that on a force play with less than two outs, both the runner making the illegal slide and the batter runner will be called out and all other runners will return to their position at the time of the pitch. Now, if it does happen as a force play with two outs, then the runner that made the illegal slide will be called out and the batter is considered to have batted into a fielder's choice. So those are the rules associated with a legal slide in NFHS baseball. Now let's dive into some case plays to better understand enforcing these rules. Case play number one. With R1 at first base, a ground ball is hit to F6, who throws to F4 covering second. R1 legally slides late at second and stays in the baseline. However, R1 makes contact with F4, who is in front of the base. And this contact causes an overthrow at first base. Is this an illegal slide or a legal slide? The correct answer is B. This is a legal slide. As long as there is no malicious intent, there is no violation of the legal slide rules by making contact with a fielder who is in front of the base. In case play number two, with R1 on first base, B2 hits a ground ball to F4, who makes a throw to F6 in an effort to turn a double play. R1 slides directly into second base. Is this legal or illegal? The correct answer is this is a legal play as the slide goes directly into the bag. In case play number three, we have a similar play with R1 on first base, B2 hits a ground ball to F4, who makes a throw to F6 in an effort to turn a double play. However, in this play, R1 does not slide directly into the base, but instead slides or runs away from F6. Is this legal or illegal? The correct answer is that this is legal. The force play slide rule does allow for a runner to run away from the direction of the fielder in order to avoid interfering or making contact on a double play. Next, we have case play number four. R3 is on third base and R1 is on first base with no outs. A ground ball is hit to F6 who throws to F4 at second base. R1 slides out of the base path in an attempt to prevent F4 from turning the double play. Your answer options are A. This is legal. B. This is illegal with R1 being declared out as well as the batter runner and R3 returned to third base. C, this is illegal. R1 is declared out as well as the lead runner being R3 and the batter runner is awarded first base. Or D, this is illegal. R1 is declared out. R3 is returned to third base and the batter runner is awarded first base. First, we know that this is an illegal slide because it is a force play and R1 slide is not directly in the base path between second and first. On top of this, the force play slide rule specifically states that we will, we will always get the batter runner out as well for the illegal slide, and all other runners will be returned to the base they were at at the time of pitch. The base is loaded, a ground ball to F1 is thrown to F2. R3 slides directly into and past home plate. F2 on his throw to another base is contacted by R3 and the baseline extended. The contact is not malicious. Is this A, a legal slide, B, an illegal slide with R3 being declared out. C, an illegal slide with R3 being declared out along with the batter runner. Or D, an illegal slide where R3 scores on the play since the interference was after touching the plate and the batter runner is also called out and R1 and R2 return to their location at the time of pitch. The correct answer is A, this is a legal slide. Because R3 slid directly into home plate and the baseline extended, and the contact was not malicious, this is not a violation of rule 8-4-2B. Case play number six is a similar play. With the bases loaded, a ground ball to F1 is thrown to F2. R3 slides on the ground, not in a direct line to the plate, but reaching out with his hand to touch the plate. His contact hinders F2's attempted throw to third base. The correct answer for this play is C. This is a force play slide rule interference. Because this is a force play at the plate, the slide must be directly into the plate, which it is not. As a result, the ball is immediately dead, R3 is out as well as the batter runner, 
and all other runners return to their position at the time of pitch. Next, in case play number 7, R2 is on second base with one out. B3 hits a single and R2 scores. After catching the throw behind the plate, F2 tries to throw to second base, but the slide hinders F2's throw. R2's slide was not in a straight line through the plate. Is this A, the ball is immediately dead, R2's run counts and B3 is called out on the interference, B, the ball is immediately dead, R2 is declared out, the run does not count, and B3 must return to first base, or C, R2 slide is legal. The correct answer is A, the ball is immediately dead, R2's run counts, and B3 is called out on the interference. Because this is interference by a retired runner, and in the judgment of the umpire, another runner could have been put out, the umpire shall declare that runner out. In case play number eight, we have a similar play to number seven. However, in this play, R2 slide was in a straight line into, over, and through the plate in the baseline extended. Because the slide was directly into the plate and runners are protected at home plate to slide through the base, this would be a legal slide. In case play number nine, we have R1 on first base and R3 on third base with no outs. B2 hits a one hopper to F5 who throws to F4 at second base for the force out of R1. R1 slides illegally into second base. Is this A, a delayed dead ball, and if F4's throw to first is able to retire the batter runner, the results of the play stand? B, this is an immediate dead ball, R1 is declared out, R3 is returned to third, B2 is awarded first, or C, this is an immediate dead ball, R1 is declared out along with B2, and R3 is returned to third. The correct ruling is C. This is an immediate dead ball is anytime we have an illegal slide, the ball is immediately dead by rule. Also, because this is a force out illegal slide, the batter runner will also be called out. And by rule, all other runners must return to their position at the time of pitch. In case play number 10, the bases are loaded with less than two outs. B5 hits a ground ball to F4, who throws to F2 for the force out at home. The throw pulls F2 off home plate several steps towards the first base side. R3, seeing F2 ready to make a play on B5 at first base, touches home plate and maliciously crashes into F2. Is this A, R3 and B5 are declared out, R1 stays at second, R2 stays at third, and R3 is ejected with no run scoring? Or is it B, R3 and B5 are declared out, R1 and R2 return to their bases at the time of pitch, and R3 is ejected and no run score? First, we know that this is a forced play slide roll at the plate as the bases were loaded and this is the play on R3. Even though R3 scores on this play, they still have to abide by the slide rule. As a result, their illegal slide will have them and the batter runner declared out. By rule, when we have a violation of the forced play slide rule, all other runners return to their position at the time of pitch. For that reason, R2 will return to second base and R1 will return to first. Because this is malicious contact, R3 is ejected and no run score on the play. Finally, our last play, case play number 11, is very similar to play number 10 except for the number of outs. In play 11, the bases are loaded with two outs and again we have a ground ball to F4 who throws to F2 for the force out at home. The throw pulls F2 off home plate several steps towards the first base side, and R3, seeing F2 to ready to make a play on B5 at first base, touches home plate and maliciously crashes into F2. Is it A, R3 will be declared out and ejected for the contact and no run score, B, R3 will be declared out and ejected for the contact and the run scores, or C, B5 will be declared out for R3's illegal slide and R3 is ejected and no run score. First, we know that because R3 caused malicious contact with F2, R3 will be ejected no matter what. The force play slide rule does point out though that when there are two outs and an illegal slide occurs on a force play, the runner that had the illegal slide is the one that will be declared out 
and the batter runner will be credited with batting into a fielder's choice. Again, because this is an illegal slide on a forced play, no runs will score on the play. So there you have it, our rules review of the NFHS slide rules. If you found this video helpful and want to try going through the case plays on your own before we review them, you can sign up for our weekly rules quiz in the video description. And again, we're making our push for a thousand subscribers. Be sure to go to our YouTube page and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching everyone. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the field.